In this lecture on auditing, we're going to discuss prohibited services when you are the financial statement auditor for a public company or a publicly traded company. So what are those prohibited services related to publicly traded audit clients? Well, when you're an auditor of those financial statements, you cannot perform the following non-audit services. It includes bookkeeping or other services related to the accounting records or financial statement of the audit clients. That preparation of the financial statements makes sense with everything we've looked at so far of threats to our objectivity. If we're preparing the financial statements, how can we audit the financial statements? Next on the list is financial information system design or implementation. So what that means is, you know, let's say your company's on QuickBooks or something like that, and we're going to upgrade to an ERP system, an enterprise resource planning system. And so it's going to touch, touch on everything within the company. So not just the financials. So you're going to design that out. You're going to put a plan for implementation. A lot of people are going to be involved, but you're not going to include that external auditor because if they're involved setting up the controls and whatnot within the system, they're not necessarily going to be looking at the right things when they come in and audit. They're, that's that self-review threat to objectivity because they've set it up and then they're going to audit what they've set up. Now, what I have seen with companies is the financial information system design is showed to the external auditor so that they can get a feel for what they're setting up and identify anything that might be an obvious control issue. And then they'll let the client know so that they can kind of address those things. They haven't tested it. They haven't implemented it. They haven't really even designed it, even though they've had a little input here. But when they come back and they do the actual financial statement audit, uh, hopefully the client has addressed some of these maybe glaring system issues that weren't looked at prior to implementation. Appraisal and valuation services are next on the list. And again, you're going to sell your company. If you appraise your own work that you're going to then financially audit, that would not be right. Appraisals, again, usually an outside company is going to do that. Actuarial services are the next item on the list. And that's when your client hires an outside entity to do all their calculations related to pension value and also post-retirement benefits such as medical, health. Those are items that the company may offer and may fund those things. But related to the value of that, you don't want the financial statement auditor to do that. You want an expert in that area of actuarial services so they understand fully what that value is based on the expectation of livelihood of the individuals that are currently working for your company they're going to retire, the individuals that are already retired from your company, so that they all know and factor that in for that value. So again, something you don't have the financial statement auditor do. Internal audit outsourcing services. And that was something that was really big about 15 or so years ago after Enron uh, in 2001, and people had to start doing all this uh, controls work because of that. They hired in internal auditors and the internal audit uh, field grew and people started to look at that cost related to it and they had big four companies come in and say, you know what, you've got that internal audit group. Why don't we replace them with our external, you know, Deloitte, PwC, whatever, and we'll do that service for you. They had to not be the external financial auditor. So if Deloitte was doing the external financial audit, PwC might come in and try to do the internal audit services. And many public companies started to go this path. And eventually they found that that was very expensive. They also found that the external people had other commitments and weren't as uh, maybe sometimes even knowledgeable about that company or they had multiple clients and so they didn't feel they were getting the service they needed. So it kind of uh, evolved into more of a co-sourced model in which the companies now have hired the people back into the internal audit group, not as many, and then when there's specialty needs or maybe an increase in needs, they co-source or they bring in an external uh, entity to do some of those internal audit services for them. So it's really now more of a co-source model than an outsource model. Next is management functions or human resources where you're actually making decisions for the company. I think that goes without 
saying related to the management participation um, threat to objectivity. If you're making management decisions for your client, how can you really audit that client? Investment advisor, dealer, broker, banking services, you're performing a function related to the entity that conflicts with your ability to make good decisions about the financial statement audits and legal and expert services related to the audit. So if you're an expert uh, coming in to work with the client on some litigation and things like that, you might be a little bit too involved to the, the related uh, litigation to be able to step back as an external auditor and make a good judgment on what the true liabilities are. It's just an example. And then any other service that PCAOB determines through regulation. So I hope that gives you a quick overview on the prohibited services when you are the financial statement auditor for a publicly traded company.